People always say, let's bring the 80s back. It's here. Love, you gotta chase your dreams. Live your life. Learn to hold your own when it ain't going right. Bring your people love. Show them more than life. Go against the world and do it more than twice. Yeah, one, so. so that's another thing guys, they're not on social media, so no. I'm getting an insight on it. There's more history to be talked that's about right, with this right. family. And then the good thing is we're all local here, you know, all of these things are here in Houston. The pro freestyle tours, the performers, we got like nothing but generals, horrors, red lines, touches. Name any color trick star we have on, the GTs we have on. Yeah. Just come by, take a look. Hey, hey, hey my man right out. now, my man right now is flexing. And, oh, and that's yeah, what it yeah, should yeah. be. Hopefully, if you're watching this channel, I want it to grow in Houston. I want people to right. say, you know what? Come down. So again, guys, pleasure. Thank you. We are here with Sergio. I want to kind of get started with saying how you and I met. I saw you setting up, I saw your son, you know, bringing all the bikes into the Texas Roundup Houston. Just seeing one of the bikes, I was like, okay, this is gonna be a great show. I didn't know who you were or anything like that, but also as judging, I was just like, you know, peeping out different details. I had to say that, that we didn't know each other going into this, but after the show, I was able to get in and you know, start picking Sergio's brain on all different things. And of course, when you're into BMX, you instant best friends. And so Sergio had sent me a message saying, hey, I got something new. I was like, what is it? And so he sent me this frame here and it is the... Well, from what I know, it's the only one of a kind. 1985 GJS, owned by the original owner of GJS, George. He's the one that took this frame and patterned it a two-tone color, but did not like it. So it just sat in the family until Jeff Otterback let it go and I was able to take possession of it. So this is the only one that I know has a prototype two-tone GJS owned by George, the owner of GJS company. So let's go into a little bit of GJS because when you first, I have to be very honest and I'll be honest with the viewers out there that are all watching. I did not know what GJS was. So when he sent me the frame, I was like, okay. And then of course, as, as a collector, as a BMX enthusiast, I had to do my research. And so from my understanding, GJS started in 1978 and they ended production in 85. That's correct. GJA started as a race company in 1978. They were good, they were beautiful frames. Rare, they're from South California, from what I know. They started uh, doing great. Jeff, which is his son, Otterback, he rode for SE Racing at that time until he just left the SE and started helping his dad out in, with his company by the late 80s. 84, 85, but then that's when they started dealing with the freestyle and freestyler was coming in. So that's, this is where they started uh, designing freestyle bikes, but not too many were built because in, in 1985, that's when the company closed. And so not too many frames were built for freestyles. And this is from what I know, it's the only one in the world that it exists as a prototype. And so what I see looking at this frame, you can see the early designs. You can see how the later models probably had a lot of inspiration from this 85 model. And not just GGS, I'm talking all freestyle bikes from the 80s. It has a lot of stuff that I quickly see. Kind of like the seat, right by the seat post, where if you're a freestyler growing up in the 80s, this is where you were standing, where you were putting your two feet. You got your built-in pegs in the back. Just a lot of detail. It's something to me screams freestyle and it screams 80s. So after meeting Sergio and talking to him over, about all these bikes, there's more to them. We got two more generations of your sons that yeah. are now part of the collecting and they are, they're well-versed and they have their own bikes and their own collection along with yours. This is Robert Roberto. We all call him Robert, I call him Rob. My youngest son, he's uh, 23 years old. Uh, to my left is Sergio Jr. So without further ado, let's get this thing unwrapped. Man. So one thing I've, I noticed with you unwrapping this, Sergio, is you can see there's some, some wear to it, right? Yeah. So it's not something that was powdered and just set around. From what I know from Jeff, they built it. Poor Jeff, out of back, let it go. He took it apart mm -hmm. and got rid of the frame, which came into my possession. But it was a complete bike. It was ridden at some point, correct? Yes. On the top tube, I see a little bit of wear here. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. If it's not NOS, Survivor is the Survivor, best, right? Yeah. So uh -huh. we know this. With this, it screams prototype to me because you can see a little dirt in the in the powder. But I'd say that to just know that 
this was something that the guys at GJS were just kind of playing with and tinkering with, so it didn't have to be perfect. It didn't have to be ready for production. In any business, if you're manufacturing something, you gotta have a prototype first, right? You gotta be able to touch it, feel it before your investors say, yeah, green light, and let's start making it. The welds are still precise. One thing I like about this one is that it had this square back tubing. Yes. And, and, the, for the, and the bridge for the brake and the upper, upper back stack. Yes. So the whole back half is a lot of square tubing. So all y'all that are out there watching, what Sergio just did was he saw his son Robert put it in with, without, without this, right? So in my mind, right, everybody out there was probably cringing. I cringe a little bit, but also I know he knows how to take care of his bike. So he laid it in very quiet. Um, and that was going to lead to my next question. So when you're handling a bike, I've seen y'all bringing bikes, the way you brought this in, just like you did at the show, every part is individually wrapped. And that's what really, where I see that he is a true collector because every piece is valuable. It's very good caregivers for sure. Manufactured by GJS USA. There are very low numbers on the GJS Freestyle. They're probably about less than 10 in existence. Most yep. of them okay. are, are in the uh, UK, not too many here in the USA. So what we're looking at here is we have two different options, right? So we have the Diacom original. Nippon Freights. And then. The 80, 85 dated. Mint condition, 401 Redline flights. Woody Itzen NOS bars by Hutch. Now these bars, let's talk a little bit about bars. So as soon as you said Woody Eatson, I know that he was a pro rider for... For mainly for... For mainly for Hutch, right? Yeah, and, and other, other companies. And the cool fun fact about Woody, he is here in Texas. He lives out in Dallas. I have to take a look at these bars, get a closer look myself, because I know I probably will not see another set anytime soon. We've got his signature right here. So all you Hutch fans out there, share out this video. These are parts that you won't see all the time. And thank you for sharing this with other enthusiasts. And that's what we're here doing is, we're not doing this video for you and I, we're doing this to show the community of some cool rare parts that normally you would never see here in 2023. Here we have some NOS ACS. Uh, oh man. Slanted, 55 slanted stem. And real quick before they see that, just look at this. Still has the price, Still has the price tag. $39.95, you see the weathering on it, that just screams authentic. To me, that's the really cool factor of keeping stuff like this. Just sums up, everything is original. What stem is this? The uh, ACS uh, 55 Slanted, uh, one of the favorites of every freestyler. Very rare, very valuable. <laughs> so don't, no need to adjust your screens. This is the original. ACS um, Pro Rotor, also NOS, all in its package that I'm thinking of using. So guys, this is still in the packaging. It hasn't been opened yet. If he does use it, it will not be open until we are at the show in Austin, Texas in June. These are restored, but they're in beautiful condition. And I might use NOS ones, or I'm thinking they were to use white or black. I'm still debating on the, on the color scene. I think when you're in this hobby, you start to get the right connections. I think it's the relationships that you have, right? Right. So when someone has all these parts, that means that this guy has a lot of good relationships. He has the right connections. They don't have to sell you the parts, right? Uh -huh. So let's go into the wheel sets. Our chrome here, um, the most beautiful pieces I've ever seen. Give me, give me a little detail, uh, some history on these. Well, these are NOS hoops, uh, 
Peregrine's hoops, uh, they're not the Super Pros. The Super Pros are all chrome, which I have them. That's another option, uh, NOS Super Pros, or I have this first generation silver Peregrine's. And I have this black Z-rims uh, built with uh, bullseye hubs. I love, love your guys' opinion to see what the, what's the best wheel set for this build. Make sure I go down there and comment below what wheel set you want to see, what wheel set would you would pick. But let's go into the Z-rim. I was not that much in freestyle to really understand. Since I've been back into the collection world, I understand that the Z-wheel is supposed to st keep its form. What's the heating of it, the cooling of yes, it? Yes. Uh, or about, is it all a myth? It's all, uh, well, I was never a, a fan of Z-rims, but they're, you know, they're... They're unique. It did help in, in the uh, 80s. People kept bending the hoops, the aluminum hoops from their bikes. And that's when they, from what I know, the, they came with this graphite uh, hoops from uh, Z-Rims. Is it true or is it a myth? If it gets bent, it, you could reheat it and it takes it, its it, form it again? Does, it does take its form again. But I seen it one time in my life where it does. A friend did bend it and uh, he did heat it up and he did came back back in shape. And guys, the, what we're talking about, if you're not understanding is, when you're going to lace up a wheel and then you get it on its machine to true it up, meaning to get it zeroed in perfect, if it's wobbling and it's not chewing in, we have seen that you could reheat it and it get back into its regular form that the manufacturer had intended it to. So I think that's pretty cool. But to see these and definitely handle with care, because again, guys, none of this stuff can be replaced other than finding another collector having it. But I do have other options. I do have other other ideas, and I'm just debating what type of seam to take, whether to use a double you know, white in the front and black at the back or just put, you know, black components all together. And uh, that's, I'm still kicking that idea, but any suggestions or any opinions, they're, you know, glad to hear them. And again, guys, this is a teaser. So this, this is still just a few of the parts that we have to choose from. I say we as if it's my bike, but it, we'll say we because of this, this bike is really gonna get built up for the community. Um, and, you know, Sergio and I and his sons, we're GT guys. Uh, we love the wings, but just in collecting, uh, as far as the community, I think there's going to, this bike could take many forms. And to see this in its final form put together, you're going to have to be at the Texas BMX Roundup in Austin, Texas in June. And that's when we're going to, we, meaning Sergio, is going to be putting this together completely, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes, by the help of Angel. Thank you, Angel, for uh, giving us the opportunity. Yeah, and if you're watching, say that. I want you to say that. <laughs> if you're saying that, what'd you say? And if you're watching this, that means that you're part of this community too. Yeah. We'll see you there. Back in the early 82, I was watching BMX. People were racing their bikes instead of a motorcycle. How they were jumping real high off, you know, ramps. And I remember getting one of those early, early, early huffies. That's when freestylers started coming in in 83 by Haro and Corker. And that's when I started enjoying more the freestyling instead of the BMX. So I 
it's just switch gears and I'm, I'm gonna focus on freestyle because I love the way they do the tricks. I love the way they were able to balance themselves. So I started practicing with my friends in the neighborhood. Started with Diamondbacks. When I came across GT, a pro performer, I felt the geometry that I, I love the size. Learned most of my tricks on a GT. You know, seeing these other name brands, the Hutch, uh, the Redmines, the Haros, the Kuaharas, loved them. You know, my wife gave me two beautiful boys. They grew. Uh, I started introducing them. At, I think they were, uh, Robert was like six and Junior was like nine. I remember there's been so many times whenever my dad kind of taught us being Mexican is just part of like the whole culture. Yeah, I remember I had, I think my first real bike was a uh, yellow GT. Mm -hmm. I remember I beat it up, I would throw it on the ground. A purple one. I had, a, purple a, I had a Lavender GT yeah. Performer. It was my yeah. first actual 80s bike. And I was, we were probably like, what? I think I was nine. Eight. I think I was nine years old. Yeah, we were little. Man. Yeah. We were just, yeah, we were just riding bikes. Kids and, riding bikes, you know, but. It was crazy. Yeah, we treated like a mountain bike. He did teach us to appreciate and the value of these kind of things. That's when I started introducing them. Hey, this is, these are the bikes that I rode. When I was your age, they're not like today's bike. They break real easy. These are made out of full chrome molly, 4130 steel. I remember my dad would, we would ask him because he would always put YouTube videos of all the Flatland. Flatland BMX. The Flatland BMX and he would show us all the videos and how they would be on ramps. And I remember one time I had asked him like, oh, okay, like that's cool. We're watching videos, but can you do them too? So he got on his bike and he said, get your butts outside. And he gets on the, on the street and he's just riding that thing backwards and he he's does a whole handlebar spin and everything. I, I don't know how bars. he did it. He's doing like the whole tail whips and stuff, flatland tail whips. We're just amazed. We're like, I've never seen this kind of stuff. I, I even rap. I even break down. What's your rapper name? <laughs> what was your rapper name? Guys, if you don't know, comment below what you think his rapper name was. One of my favorite rappers is Easy e uh, Boys in the Hood and uh, 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 Sir Mix a lot. I love all those, all those guys. And here we are, guys, I mean. And the fact that like people actually take it together and make a whole culture, and that, it's not just like individuals, it's like a whole community that does this. It's a good skill. Right. And if you guys can do that, still to this day, that is amazing. Here's my first generation of my boys, hope they take over. To me, I'm still a kid, I'm still a child. That's my wife complains about me. She keeps telling me to grow up. <laughs> I don't want to grow up. Right. You, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just the kid comes out again and you don't, everything just, just disappears. You're not thinking about work. You're not thinking about your responsibilities. You're not thinking about what you have going on. You just, you can finally bring out the inner child again. And I love that. It's beautiful being able to pick up a bike and be a kid and just do something that you love. And I love that about the BMX thing. It was okay to be creative, you know? It was, yeah. it was like a friendly competition. At heart, you're still a kid, you know? And I love that. And I love that the 80s are coming back. In my opinion, the 80s are here already. And we just need to get together and uh, enjoy our childhoods and uh, let's show off our bikes. All right, guys, we're gonna end this video. Um, so if you are still watching till the end, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to see this bike in person, make sure you come to the Texas BMX Roundup in Austin, Texas, first week of June, correct? That's correct. If you're on Instagram, you wanna go to Texas BMX Roundup. Angel's doing a great job on promoting this. And this is, again, guys, this is a teaser for the community. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you, Sergio Jr. and Robert. Man, again, guys, this is for the community. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share out this video. And again, this is more about not just the JGS that is a one of one, but this is about family. Thank you for watching. We'll see y'all in Austin, Texas. Peace. Mm -hmm.